evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Talking with 3D. I am your host, Derek Durrell Dixon, and this is Real Talk for Real People. I am so excited. I have my producer of Talking with 3D, Mr. Michael Lee, is in the house, ladies and gentlemen. He is the multi-talented, award-winning singer, songwriter, and filmmaker, Mike Lee. Mr. Lee, how are you doing, sir? I finally made it to the show. Finally, yes. <laughs> finally, I get my chance. <laughs> See, he's like, I produced the show and everything, and he ain't asked me to come on here not once. Nobody else coming on there. I ain't going. No, no, not at all. Matter of fact, when you asked me, I was absolutely shocked. Uh -huh. I was backing out, and you were like, "Oh no, you're not." Right. And I'm like, you know, okay, yeah, you got it. I'm there. I'm not gonna. Yes. First of all, I can't, I'm not, can't say no. It's you know, it's our show. You know, <laughs> I'm so grateful to to be a part of this incredible show uh, that we do every week. Derek, you do yes. such a wonderful job. I'm so proud of you and what you, you bring to the table, what you bring to your audience. It's authentic. It's real talk for real people, and I'm a part of it, so I'm grateful. So thank it's, you. I appreciate it. Bless. Appreciate me. it. Yes. You. Listen, I, it's so exciting that. Um, when you meet people that come into your life and it's all orchestrated and you know, God makes no yeah. mistakes. Yeah. Everything is so orchestrated. And the first time I heard about Mike Lee, I was getting, um, I was already acclimated as with another show, helping brothers out. And I was starting a new show, which another was another great show that is. Yeah. Yes. So, um, I had, uh, we had mutual friends, that were trying to get us to collaborate together. And at first I had an attitude. I was like, I don't know no Mike Lee. I don't know Mike Lee. They want me to call Mike Lee. What am I calling Mike Lee for? <laughs> I already got a show. What y'all talking about? <laughs> call somebody. So we kind of hit and miss and everything. And we really, um, you know, we kind of chatted, didn't talk or nothing like that. So some months have went by. And, um, you know, I was again, trying to get this other show started and everything. This is the show that we are talking about are on right now, talking with 3D. And again, Mike Lee's name came up and I was like, let me call this Mike Lee and see what Mike Lee is all about. Okay, so, now listen, let me pick up from there, Derek. <laughs> Finally, we get on the phone. You, I don't know if you remember, we get on the phone and we're talking it through and I'm just too busy for it. I'm like, I, I don't yeah. know what I can do. I said, well, I'll tell you what, let me give you the stuff. I'll tell you what you can do and you can right. kind of do some research and you do it, blah, blah, blah. And you said, okay, okay. And you know, we kind of went, you know, we got right. off the phone. I right. think two, three weeks later, we were back on the phone again. You yes. Know? And yep. that particular time, you know, I, I look for patterns in life and spiritual patterns and all these types of things. And we were back on the phone. I'm thinking, why am I back on the phone with this right. young man again about this show? Why am I back here? So, okay, God, I need to pay attention. Yeah. Pay yes. Attention. And the rest yes. is for it. That's all I have to say. That Yeah, I remember. But you, you, I mean, the way you left off is, is exactly it. You know, doors are opening up for me and I'm, things that you have prayed for and and here doors are opening up and I was about to shut that door because of my ego, my attitude, who I thought I was and where, you know, <laughs> and it's so funny how when you are, are, you know, you think that you're established and you really, you don't think, oh, I don't need nobody to do this. I don't need nobody to do that. And God places people in your lives just to enhance what you, what you are doing. Yeah, yeah. That's what me and Mike Lee have established. Absolutely. We have established this relationship, this friendship. Absolutely. I've started moving forward. And I am so glad that I did. Because Absolutely. otherwise, I think I would have been stuck. I wouldn't have been where I'm at right now. So I appreciate Mike, everything that you have done. Thank you. Thank you. Have taught me because I, I am just blown away. I want to tell y'all a little bit about Mike Lee. And I know a lot of you know oh, Mike. People, close your ears. Close your ears. <laughs> this is the boring part of the show. I 
I know a lot of you know Mike Lee that are watching right now, but you know how you think that you, you're like, I know this person, but do I know this person? <laughs> and, and Mike sent me over his bio. I, I called him up immediately and I'm like, who the hell are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, bro, bro's been around. He's been around. Yes, before. yes. Let me tell y'all a little bit about Mike Lee. Mike Lee, again, born in Birmingham, Alabama. He moved to Los Angeles, signed with MCA as a seasoned writer and landed back uh, backup gigs with Hathaway, with Esta, penned three songs on Raymond Jones' first album, Acts of Love, he uh, also has worked with TLC. He also, when he moved to Atlanta, worked with LaFace Records and toured with, with TLC. If y'all don't know this, the female group, TLC. And um, also back up, he went up two tours with TLC. Yep. Yep. Uh, listen, also, I was sitting there reading about Mike. He's traveled the world as a professional background singer. Also, he's also been a lead singer. And I'm just like, Mike, <laughs> you, you never, and this is what astonishes me. You never know who you're entertaining or who you might meet. And you always have to put your best foot forward because you could have shut the door on me if I came in here with a nasty attitude and all that kind of stuff and literally shut the book. Who's this I think he is? <laughs> and and we never discussed this, Mike. You know what we the never thing is something it's so funny that you say that because all that's true, but you didn't you never gave me any of that. You gave me your talent. I could feel your talent. We were we talked back and forth. Um but the main thing was is you were very humble. Mm -hmm. um, you were very, it was very clear that, you know, there were some things you didn't know about the production and that you wanted to know and that you were stuck in this place. And here I am knowing all about this. Right. Thinking, okay. Well, then this is a hand in glove. This is a fit. So then we're supposed to be doing this. Okay. Yes. So this is another opportunity for me now to take on a project and make it a part of my own. And you were co-producing. We were both producing. You produce your own show. Like yes. everybody should know that you produce your show, you come up with your topics, you come mm. up, you do your guest. I remember when I was in radio, I did everything to a yes. point. And, and I, <clears throat> if my girls are watching who used to come on with me, uh, it was a fault and I, it was a disservice to them. I should have utilized them more, but I wanted to make sure everything was right. It couldn't be yes. off any, any, any moment of it. So I had to set a pace for two hours from the top to the bottom. So I had to know what was going on every, every 15 minutes. There was something that uh -huh. happened every 10 minutes. So it was planned. I would plan it out throughout my week, dump all my music down. They said, Oh, you got to get a DJ. And I said, no, I don't want anybody playing my music. I like music. I know what I want to hear. So right. I put all of my music and put it on an iPod and in all of my intros, all of my PSAs, and I just programmed everything. And I wow. knew when I was going to speak. I knew when I was going to have a phone guest. I knew when my girls were going to say something, do their funny stuff, and then when we were going to come out because I just come right in and go, okay, we're, well, guys, look, we're going to go to a break and just keep the show going. So getting back to you, I could tell there was something in you that wanted mm -hmm. to get out and you had this show plan. And I thought that was me when I was in radio. Yes. I had all this stuff designed, I had it planned, but I didn't have anybody to show me what to do. And so when I got into the station, they showed me how to operate the the, the studio. And once I got that down, it was, I was just smooth sailing. It was about nice. coming in there and performing. The other part is, is that, you know, there's a lot of people that boast about what they do and mm -hmm. who they are and all of this. I'm at the age now, it's not about what I've done, it's about what I'm doing. Right. And the, the things that I've done, I'm very, very proud of them. It's I've had a great, great career and great life. Jesus Christ have I had mm. an incredible life. Right. During the 90s, when hip hop music was, you know, just flourishing, you had the Budweiser Fest and all of these festivals, when you'd have a group of people, black people, mm. young music, the, the ones that are out now, the big entrepreneurs like the Puffies and, you know, and all of these people, they were on tour. These guys were out working. They were working 
the stage, Mary, him, Biggie, Lil Kim, Foxy Brown. We were on tour with all these these people because I, of my association with TLC. They were the mm. biggest female group, you know, in the '90s. And so, me getting involved with them got me to to see and experience so mm. much across the world and touring with music. So I'm very grateful for that, you know. But I saw that in you, yeah. Yes. Listen. I got to get to the messy part because th this, uh -oh. this, this is what the readers, this is what the listeners really want to know about. Because you <laughs> travel with TLC. Yeah. TLC came out with their um, bio movie uh -huh. and allegedly made some statements uh -huh. uh, about working with certain producers and things uh -huh. like that. Mm -hmm. And that, um, you know, they went on tours and and the big shows, they Grammys and everything. TLC was the Huge. hottest Huge. female group around yeah. and claimed to be broke, not have a dime. Um, they weren't getting paid. So what we want to know as the listeners, because you was a background singer for TLC, did you get your change? Did I get what? Did you get your change? Yes. Uh, TLC paid me very well. Uh -huh. um, and they, they did have a lot of mishaps. You know, there were three young girls in the business coming do into you, mm -hmm. No, do go ahead. Do you think it's because of age or they didn't have the right guidance to- You know what? Them? Let me tell you that. There were three young girls uh, from all across the world. You had, you had Lisa, who was from Philly. Then you had um, Rosanda, Chile. And then you had Tian. Uh, lovely Tian, who was from, um, oh God, was Idaho, uh, Iowa, Iowa, right. my mom right. from Iowa. Um, and so all of these girls from different parts of the world, but not very astute and educated in mm -hmm. contracts, business, music, but they were the most talented girls. They had talent that they wanted to get out. Now, right. their mothers were working mothers. They weren't attorneys. They mm -hmm. weren't lawyers. Um, they weren't in cubicles looking at contracts. And so right. you get girls like that and you get people who are excited around them and telling them what they can do. It's really about them getting excited and, and mm. seeing all of this power around them because they wanted to be a group. They had tried to be a group with Ian, they, um, Ian Burke. People don't know who Ian Burke is. Ian Burke is very, very important in, in, in creating groups like TLC. Um, right. There was another huge group from um, from uh, Atlanta. Um, oh God, it was a very eclectic group. Um, I'll think of them at some point. Okay. But 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 high, um, but he was very very instrumental in bringing that group uh, to fruition. And then it got to Perry, which was Pebble, mm. uh, through Marie Davis, who was a hairstylist, uh, and Tian worked at the salon. All these different things happened, but no one really um, talked about contracts with them or anything like that. So they get a deal okay. and it's not the best deal. Mm. And so generally, and this is to anybody getting in a deal or 360 or whatever, when you're getting in a deal, no no one is signing you thinking you're going to be a huge star and that you're going right. to sell as many records as TLC did. And when they signed that, there was and, and made so much money, yet money was going out. Uh, to different people, money was going out to different managers, money was going out to different um, uh, record company things. And there are three girls. Money has to be mm. spent three ways. And with three girls, there are three expenses. Mm. Buy right. for family, cars. And you want to buy purchase, you want to purchase things because you are, you are who right. you are now. You're, You're TLC, talking. right. And so a lot of it had to do with just expenditures too much and a bad contract. So yeah, mm. they went they went broke. They went broke. Wow. This was this was a bad time for them because they should have been at the pivotal point in their career to to enjoy their right. success. And they couldn't enjoy it because you were fighting men in the mm. record company. Uh, because right. you know, and I know if they're listening they would listen to this, they would probably disagree with me. Pebbles was probably the best thing that I right. think that you know happened to them because she was a woman in the business who understood women. She had mm -hmm. three young girls. She was trying to protect, mm -hmm. and there were men who were trying to take over what she was trying to protect. 
And I think in some way, the guys came and got the girls against Pebbles. Okay. And that was the enemy in, in this demise. Now, I'm sure the girls has another, they've got another story. I, right. I wouldn't go back and forth with them. This is just my, my opinion. Your opinion. And I think that's a good point that you brought up, though, too. Is that because, you know, I, when you just said that, it's kind of an aha moment where, where you're saying that Pebbles brought these girls in because of the fact that she is a woman and she wanted to empower you know, women and show them the way. But again, she's fighting a bunch of men. They're saying, no, we're going to do it this way. And she was tough. And when mm -hmm. you're tough sometimes on, on, on your group and you've got other people saying, oh, you don't have to take that. Oh, you don't have to do that. Oh no, she's mm. doing this. So, so it was a, a, a divide and conquer that these guys infiltrated, knowing that these are little girls, that they can say something or you know a certain way, look a certain way, get their attention, and then start to push them back from Pebbles. And I think that's that to me is what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, that was so unfair to Pebbles, and it was really unfair to the girls because she was. I think she was just trying to protect them. Yeah, and I think she, you know Pebbles is is an icon herself. I mean, she. <laughs> Came yeah. out as as a solo artist Definitely. and became a manager and everything. So she, Mama, she's Mama very was, was on point because yes. she was a, an attractive, beautiful woman who came yes. to the business, woo us away, and um, with her look, her fashion, her songs, and stuff like that. And it was very uh, classic R and B, you know, with Kenny and Babyface producing. And um, so yeah, her career was very well orchestrated. Yeah. Wow. Listen, we're going to come back. I want to talk a little bit about you being a background singer, knowing, um, you know, when you found that, like, this is what I want to do. I want to, I want to sing. And then you got into being a background singer, things like that. So let's discuss that because there's a lot of people out there want to know, how do, how do I do this? How do you so do So we'll it? be right back. You guys tell me, don't go anywhere. You are watching Talking With 3D. I am talking with Mike Lee, and we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere because this is real talk for real people. It's Christmas. We're my background singers. Woo! Oh, baby, baby, I and it's the wrong words on the cue card. I don't know the song. It's Christmas. I'm gonna have them all I can because. And ladies and gentlemen, we are back just like that. Listen, we are talking to award-winning, multi-talented singer, songwriter, Mike Lee. He is the producer of Talking With 3D. And we're also gonna be talking about several other shows that he produces and his talk shows that uh, that he is producing and his new network, Plush Work TV, which I am a part of. So we're going to be talking about that as well. But Mike, I want to know, because there's a lot of our listeners listening right now that inspire to sing. And I know a lot of background singers that we grew up listening to mm -hmm. are now uh, multi-platinum recording artists that have their own you know, music and things like that. I, you know, I, I remember uh, Kelly Price was a backup singer and uh, so many of our, our R&B singers started as background singers. Where did you discover, first off, that, you know, yes, I, I can sing and then get yourself into being a background singer? So um, I was a huge fan of Luther Vandross, still to this mm -hmm. day, a huge fan of Luther Vandross. Love his whole... Um, the whole thing that he developed there in New York because he was surrounded, you know, his story, he has a great, the Luther Vandross story is a great story. 
Um, a lot of people don't. He was a backup singer. He was a backup yes. singer for Roberta Flack, as a matter of fact. Yes. Two of my favorite singers, uh, yes. Roberta Flack, uh, Luther Vandross. But here's a guy, he's a heavy set guy, not the most attractive guy, but he has this golden voice. And mm -hmm. he does all of these different things um, with all of these wonderful different people, meeting singers, meeting musicians. Um, I got to interview when I was in radio, all of the all of uh, the members of the female voices of, of Chic who went on to sing background for Luther, Alpha mm. and Ava Cherry, um, uh, Tawatha AG uh, with the M2. Okay. Uh, I've interviewed all of them. And um, there's one young lady in particular, and I'll tell you her name in a moment, who told me this wonderful story about Luther and her uh, riding on the train both of them, one was catching East, one was catching West, and Luther had heard that she could sing. And he's mm. like, aren't you that girl who could sing? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, meet me at the Apollo or something like that. And they end up meeting there, but they went on to, uh, I don't know, you know the story about Luther singing at the Apollo um, for Sesame Street. So mm. they, they are all there, but long story short, Luther forms a group called Luther and and his career just goes on and on up, up, until his death. The first time I heard his voice, I started humming to it. And I didn't know I could sing, sing. Okay. Um, I had been a dancer. I had gone to Alabama School of Fine Arts. And I okay. had studied dance and ballet and African dance and modern dance. Um, so I'd done all this stuff and then moved into stage dancing with dance companies and uh, doing the Nutcracker. So my first career was really about dance. I was going to be a dancer. Okay. Um, and, and then a uh, long story short, Jennifer Holiday came to Birmingham, Alabama and did a stage play called Sing the Hell You Sing. And I yes. thought, oh, did you, see, do you remember that? Sing yes. That scene? Yes. I, I was there every night. I thought uh. I was broke. First of all, I was broke. I was young, broke. You know, you're going to school, you got a little two cent job and you're just broke. Mm. And I'm thinking, how can I go to this show every night? And someone said, go and usher. If you usher, you mm. can work there and you can see the show. And I saw every show because I ushered. I wow. ushered and after I, after she left, I left. I didn't work there anymore because okay. I just wanted to see her on stage with all of these uh, incredible, Kiki Shepard was on stage. Uh, one of uh, Stephanie Mills' background singers, um, uh, somebody, a couple of other people, and it was a, a big musical guy who was directing. So um, I saw what I saw then was singing and dancing and performing and script and everything meshed all mm -hmm. on stage. And I'm thinking, how do you do that? What is that? Yes. You see a theater and Broadway, and I fell in love with it. So yeah. I got into. Um, I got into, to, I, was, I was a dancer. I got into choreo choreography and choreography with other um, people who are writing plays or doing things. And so that's how, that's how I incorporated my vocals in, mm. in my vocals into my dance. And then when I did hear Luther Vandross, that gave me a gateway because I could fine tune what my vocals sound like. Okay. So a lot of it was mimicking the sound of Luther. Then I realized not only if I could sing, he was a background singer, maybe I could just be a background singer. So I was so confused during my my uh <laughs> you know um earlier years because I I was told I was a great lead singer, but then there were times that I didn't want to be out front okay. I, I, oh my god I'm, I'm 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 moody i don't feel it so right I in the back and once i found out you can sit on the stool or be in the back hide from everybody else joke with your bud buddies on the mic i thought oh this is heaven who right. is going to be out front if you can be <laughs> right back here and chill out you know, and that's how I got interested into mm. that. And in Birmingham, because it's a small city, everybody knows everybody. That was really it was a it was a um, opportunity for me to get ahead because everyone knew. So I could get a gig simply by oh this person knows that person, 
uh, that person knows this person. So it was about who who I knew. Now I would eventually right. move to Atlanta, Georgia, and sing with the group Unlimited Touch, where we started to tour for larger people, larger people right. coming into the city. And what changed the opportunity for me to want to leave the group and leave Atlanta, uh, this was in the 80s, is Vesta, Vesta Williams. Yes. Came to town. And we, and she was being managed then by one of the pips. It was Gladys. Okay. And I, one of the pips uh, managed Vesta. She was in town. And our drummer told us, we're going to be opening up for Vesta. I was <laughs> in a coma. I'm thinking, <laughs> Vesta Williams? Vesta right. Williams? Because uh, I was a huge fan. She reminded me of everybody, like Shaka. She had this right. big voice. You know, like Shaka, so she reminded me of her. And I loved her songs. She comes to town. She performs at center stage. And we open up for her. Of course, my whole set is a Luther mm-hmm. Vandross set. Okay. Um, and there was Tammy Davis and Ricky who sang with me in this group. And we had three band members. Um, and after the show, I went up to the drummer, who was the MD. And I said, man, you guys are so great. Uh, I'm going to be moving to Atlanta, to, to Los Angeles pretty soon. I hadn't told my band anything. But okay. I was, I've got my eyes set on Los Angeles. Do you have a card or anything? When you, He said, look, man, you do that Luther stuff real good. Give me a call when you get there because uh, I can always hook you up. And if we're looking for background singers, you can come and you know work with us. All right. Thinking, He's probably bull- pulling my leg. Uh-huh. But I'm going to keep his card anyway. His name was Lavelle Bell. Mm. He was uh, her musical director and um, a very good friend of hers and uh, a drum, the, the drummer. Well, maybe six months after that, I'm thinking about moving and I ended up moving to Los Angeles. And he was the first person I called. I started working at a music store called Music Plus okay. in, in Ladera. If you guys are anybody from California and Inglewood, if you remember um, Music Plus was by the grocery store and the little chicken place, that's right over there. And I ended up uh, working over there and I met uh, Lavelle Bell, Carl Lavelle, told him I was working. He came over and we went out and he said, look, man, we need a singer. And that's Mm. how I got a good gig with, with Vesta. And in that store, I met so many musicians producers, Mm -hmm. independent producers, people that I started writing with. And I also met a great, one of my best friends, Raymond Jones. Raymond Mm -hmm. Jones, if you look at any of the chic footage with them, there's a young man in the back who's just moving, bouncing around. That's Raymond on the the keyboards, Fender Road. Okay. And so she had a band and he was a part of the band. So when mm. you hear Greatest Dancer, Upside Down, um, mm. all of these great songs that she produced on artists, Raymond is playing the Fender Rhodes. Wow. When I met him, he was in a group called State of Art mm. that was produced out of New York by Spike Lee. Okay. It was him and one of the group members of Chic. Um, and that's how I met him. I didn't know he had any attachment to she. I knew him from the state of art group. And when I met him, I was just going in, in on him and everything. And I think it took him aback because he didn't know anybody knew who the hell he was. Wow. You know, and so once I met him, he brought me in to his studio, his camp. And I, that's how I started to write. Me mm. know how music was formulated, how studio sessions worked how vocal contractors contracted vocal people. You know, you have okay. a vocal, you have something called a vocal contractor that will hire the singers who has a relationship with singers. Sometimes it's not always the producer. Right, uh, you know, right. It's the person that actually handles the vocals, uh, teaches the vocals. The producer tells that person what to do. That person tells the vocals what to do. Um, okay. And so I got into all of this stuff. So Raymond, um, if you um he wrote for patty labelle he mm-hmm. wrote on whitney houston's first album oh wow and this guy is teaching me the ropes that's why i said i've had a very blessed life because who gets to do that who gets right to, to get right to do that? um which is how i ended up 
uh, on a track with Layla Hathaway. Okay. He a song called Do You Suppose. Wow. Produced in there. And so I'm just there. He says, hey, go in the booth. I want you to lay some tracks down. <laughs> I go in there. I lay them down. But Lori Perry, I don't know if you've ever heard of the group Perry. I don't remember Perry. Okay. Some people call them the Perry sisters. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 There are four girls yes. out of Los Angeles who used to be uh, singers for Anita Baker. Right. And yes. They, and they were signed to MCA. Okay. So Lori is singing the song, demoing it for Layla. Mm. And we're all, they're adding the vocals on. Okay. Well, that song ends up on Layla's album. Wow. And whose vocals end up on it? Yours truly. So, wow. so I got a chance to do a lot of work like that with Raymond, where my vocals will just pop up and just be on somebody's, somebody's album. So I got a lot of work through him. Uh, and from there, I went on. I got a call, my TLC call, to come to Atlanta, and uh, I I didn't want to go when I first mm -hmm. uh, when I first got that call from Denise Howard, um, uh, one of my good friends from Birmingham, Alabama, who was now managing Left Eye Productions. Uh, she had gotten her job at Left Eye Productions because she worked for Pebbles over at Savvy Records. Uh, gotcha. Pebbles okay. had a company called Savvy Records. She had her own record label. So Denise was working for her. Denise calls me up and said, hey, um, we're going to be coming to Los Angeles. And I'm like, we, we, who? Me, <laughs> I'm, my, I'm with a group now, TLC. We're all going to be coming there because we're shooting a video. Um, it was, was it Creep? It was, yeah, there were three versions of the Creep video. Okay. That was the second one that they did um, in Los Angeles. So they came. I met the girls, had fun with Denise, saw the video, they left. She calls me up and she says, look, we, I'm putting together the band for the tour. Sure, okay. are, you, are you interested? And I, I told her, nope, I'm actually out on the road with Vesta. Uh -huh. uh, I saw the girls, they're, they're all right, you know. Right, because Vesta, Vesta was this R&B, singer that sang she was r&b diva I'm yes leave. and then like you said tlc could sing but they were they were pop they were you well, know, hip -hop what i didn't understand even at then because obviously i should have jumped at it but mm -hmm. i hadn't gotten into hip-hop and rap and all of that i was a jazz and r&b snob okay if jazz and r&b i don't even want to hear it turn it off click it off so I was, you know, if it, I wanted to be on singing on Arsenio Hall with the, with you know, and I wanted to be on those shows. I didn't want to be on anything that had to do with hip hop or or rap. It wasn't, I wasn't, wasn't me. Mm. So I watched the video. It was I think it was Hat to the Back, and I'm thinking, oh, that's catchy. Those uh. catch on. <laughs> She's like, and I know Denise is thinking, yeah, well, you don't understand yet. I'll give you another try later. So I said no to that. She calls me back and she asked me, she said, look, we're getting down to the final. I got this one slot open. Do you want to? And I was like, well, Denise, I'm really happy here, blah, blah, blah. I was like, uh -huh. here's the mistake you made. I went, how much is, what are, the, what are you guys paying? And when right. she told me the, the specs on the tour and what I would be paid and per diem and what would it would entail, I was like, Oh boy, you better get the hell out of here. Uh huh. Immediately, I put in my resignation to um to to Vesta, who was a doll to me. She was one of the sweetest people. And Vesta was a, a literally a bitch to work for. Okay. She was Sagittarius. She was hard. She was right. Hard. It was her way or the highway. Okay. Uh, if you missed a note, she would call you out. If you missed, oh, wow. a beat, she'd look at you funny. Uh, and she talked about you in the dressing room. Mm. He was not, she didn't have it. And because she went through a lot, being heavy set with record industry people, right. once right. she got out and through that, she could be very difficult to, to deal with. I experienced none of that from mm. her. Um, okay. I never pushed her. I never, when I came to rehearsals, I came, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I was always there ahead of time. Wow. So when, when it, because I loved what I what I did. So when I would come to rehearsals, 
I would probably get there an hour ahead of time. I didn't have a car. So I would always have to, you know, catch the bus. So in catching the bus, I would get there. You know, you want to get there ahead of time because you don't right. want to get And I didn't live that far from the uh, rehearsal hall. So I would take the bus there and I would get there very early. So when Lavelle, all the band members, everybody would get there, I'm already there. And a couple of the times she showed up and she was like, boy, you here early. And I was like, I'm always here like early. And right. she, I think she got, oh, this cat is really here for the work. He's not here for me. You know, right. buddy, buddy, he's, and I wouldn't. I, I loved Vesta and I was a huge fan, but whatever I came to work to perform or sing, I put a whole nother energy on because okay. they're, they're, they're hiring me to do a task. And the task is not to be a fan. The task is right. to, you know, be overly excited just to be there, but it is to hit every one of those notes right, to say right. right, to know those words, and to know what you're doing when you get on that microphone. And if you don't, you're not, you're not doing the yeah. job. So that was my, you, that was my that was my role. Because you you are working with some some legends in the music industry, and it would, to me it would be so intimidating to be like I have to sing behind this person, like you're saying. You hitting the wrong note, you not on key, you not on beat, or things like that. That would be so intimidating to be like going, oh my gosh. You know, if we go out on tour and, and you you sing the wrong, you sing the wrong word. You know, you just know, the little things like you're that. You're right, you're right. For me, I think it's because I started out very early on stage. Mm -hmm. I started dancing when I was 13, 14. Uh, okay. Yeah, and, and not that this counts, but I used to perform even for my family. So mm -hmm. my pet family had parties and barbecues and stuff like that because I was obsessed with Soul Train. So they would always see me dancing and they'd say, come in here, boy, and dance. And they would pay me quarters and money. So my pocket... Okay. Mike, I think that we have something going on. We have this divine connection. Somehow, you did it. You did it. We've, been, we've been knowing each other in our heads, because I, me and my cousin Kelly, we always were in the backyard putting on shows for our families. Me too. Oh my! All the time, we would we would set up a little thing. We would charge people like a a, a quarter, a nickel, anything to come see us perform. Then I, you know, I got into going uh, touring with a dance troupe. Uh -huh. I went to a performing arts school oh for God. dance for theater, ballet, jazz, all of that. You know, so it's it's so funny how we have this connection. And I didn't like, know that about you. I didn't know this about you. Like this is yes. all through the interview. <laughs> my first my first experience with theater was um, my very first Broadway show, Stephanie Mills in The Wiz. And oh. I knew that I needed to be on stage. I wanted to write, I wanted to direct, I wanted to know how did they put this over here and put this over here and how did the show come together? How and you know, I- That way and- From did, everything, yeah. how did you know to, to move here? And how did you know to move upstage and downstage and everything? Who's working the lights? They so intrigued, the lighting. Lighting and the this. Oh, yes. Yes, I was it was, it was so, it was, I sat there in awe and that's when I fell, truly fell in love with the theater with Stephanie Mills at The Wiz. And it was just me and my mother. You know, she took me and I grew up a middle uh, middle child, but mm -hmm. she took me. And that's when I fell in love with music, with theater, dance, everything. And I knew right there and then that's what I wanted to do. I'm, I'm Same here. That I, I Same here. Same here. Same here. Uh, uh, you know, it was, it, and, and even with touring, and I, when we go back to the thing about being intimidated, I think that's why I was never intimidated. Mm -hmm. You could probably say the same, the same. I started out so early performing for people. Yes. That, that I could block, I could be a fan for only a moment. I could have the excitement for only a yes. moment. But then it was about the work because I yes. wanted to keep the job. If I was going to sing for someone and they were going to do a six week tour at the Redondo Beach thing and they were going to hire me, I wanted to be there the whole six weeks. Yes. I want to be there the six weeks. I want to know, 
can are you hiring for your next gig? You know, right. who are we? Are you you need me or you got you you got somebody. You right. know? So that's how I kept getting my gigs and kept busy with people. If I wasn't singing, uh, I was in a studio working on something. I was songwriting. I was constantly, I constantly work now, but it's just in a different environment. Okay. But, but back then it was a constant, 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 constant work. You were always looking for your next meal. And again, yes. you know, because yeah. once six weeks, you know, rolls off, you got to think, oh, who are six months or three months? Because, you know, tour, uh, uh, R&B tours, they're not like rock and roll tours where they go, mm -hmm. start out overseas, and then they come over here, and you're working for the whole year. You're mm -hmm. only working for, you know, maybe two months. Or maybe right. Two months, you know, and then you go back in the studio, and then you come back out and you do another this, and then you take the rest of the year off. So I was so into that sort of sy system that I was like, you know what? You just got to keep working. But I mm -hmm. never, ever, ever felt or got intimidated with yeah. our once I got the gig, signed on, shook hands, get, gave him the hug. It was, it was time to go to work. Most yep. of my interaction would always be with the musical director. Mm -hmm. I never ever asked uh, a person who I was singing for what note I needed or right. how does that go again? No, I specifically would, because that's the musical director's job. Your mm -hmm. job is to give me the musical information and the direction, not the artist. So I never put that pressure on the artists are communicating with them. So my relationship was always professional. Mm -hmm. You know, I, would, I knew them for three months, then you don't know them until you're back with them again. No phone calls, no, can you hook me up? It was a professional relationship throughout my career. And the only time I was ever in friendships or constant relationship with people, it would be with producers and music okay. directors because they were they were the one they were the one instrumental for getting me my next gig also right. they were playing with different artists so i came up knowing the game right you have to decipher and know the game to play it's not about getting close to an artist it's mm -hmm. about going under the carpet and getting really dirty there cuz that's how you're going to get your next meal your next job that's right so I, I like when we were talking about being intimidated and doing the work. And I remember where I knew I was destined for something great. Uh -huh. When I was sitting at a Diana Ross concert, I was 18 years old uh -huh. and I was sitting in the fifth row. Uh -huh. And Diana Ross was singing um, Beat It by Michael Jackson. Oh, okay. And she said, does anyone know how to moonwalk? I jumping up and down, jumping up and down, because Michael Jackson and Diana Ross, that's all I had on my walls was Michael Jackson and wow. Diana Ross on my walls. So to be at her concert, she's singing Michael Jackson. She's asking if someone can moonwalk. I jump up and people around me are pointing. They didn't even know me, he, you know, telling them he can, he can. Not knowing if I could or not. They, you, you must know. have been dancing enough. So they're like, you you better get this guy. Get this guy. So she says, you come here. And I'm like, okay. Now it was, she did the, um, uh, her concert was in the round. So it's the uh -huh. stage. Uh -huh. And I, this was in Denver, Colorado. Uh -huh. I, they, you know, they whisper in my ear. Okay. You know, kid, you know, calm yourself down. Don't do this. Don't do that. And I said, okay, I got you. I got you. Uh -huh. So I, up there and I did the whole Michael Jackson routine because all I could see was lights, the roar of the crowd and everything. I knew what my assignment was at that time. Oh, that's and beautiful. That was, that was to take this crowd by storm because this was my opportunity. So I did the whole routine and stuff and she was like, you didn't, you're supposed to come up here and moonwalk. I said, I got you one second. I'm not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> right. I got this, Diane. I said, what? You just sing the song. I got the routine. Right. So, 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 but it was the greatest moment in my life because, again, I knew, okay, I am destined for something because of the fact here I am, you know, two legends 
She's, I'm here with this legend. She's singing the person that I admire and I get picked out of thousands of Out of, of, out of the entire place. You're up there. You're up there. I get picked out and yeah. I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. So, it, you know, you, you have those opportunities Someone told me you don't have to get ready if you stay ready. Stay ready. She said it last week. <laughs> <laughs> she said it last week, and that's the truth. I keep that in the back of my head. You don't I have to get ready. ready if you stay ready. Be ready. That is so true in everything yes. we do. In everything we do. Everything. Listen, I don't want to run out of time because I want to come back and we're, I want to talk about plush work. And uh, what you are doing with plush work and you working in radio and, and what you're going to be doing with plush work. So ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. So don't go anywhere. I'm here with Mike Lee. I'm talking with 3D. When we felt like we didn't have anything, it was music that gave us a voice. We could tell each other in a song, but we couldn't say in words. Learning music changed us making us even smarter. We learned to harmonize together. And now we can go anywhere, anywhere our dreams take us. And ladies and gentlemen, we are back right here. I'm Talking With 3D. I am here with the producer of Talking With 3D. Mike Lee is in the house, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to be talking about this new project, Plush Work TV. And uh, again, uh, you know, just to be a part of something of, of, you know, when people have ideas and dreams and put it all together. And here, here I am at the beginning of something that's going to be bigger than life. That's going to be, you know, great for, you know, you see, you see networks like, like own and you can hear people talking about now, oh, turn on Plushwork TV, see what's going on on Plushwork TV. I can see it. I can feel it. I can smell it. So I am excited and I thank you for you know, allowing me to go on this journey with you because right. you know opportunities come. You you got to take chances, and you have to believe in people that are taking you with them. Yes, wow. You know, yeah. so I think this is exciting. I'm excited for you that you are doing this. But your your background is so extensive that you know what else. You know, this is just the next. This is just the next for you. Yeah, and it's funny. Um, plush work uh, came from. Uh, I was working with in 2010. I was I, uh, there was an African artist uh, that was here, and his name Danny Danny Ayiri, talented brother. Um, and he was finding himself, and he got to a place where he didn't have anywhere to go. Mm -hmm. uh, I brought him into my home. Um, he had all of his equipment and stuff like that. And I was just like, set up. You need to start writing music. You got to put yourself out there. And he says, he said something like, yes, when I get through this stuff, it's going to be plush work. And when he, mm. says, when he said it, when he said it, it was almost as if God was saying what you did for him, I'm giving you this. Mm, he like passed on the mantle. And when he said it, I said, plush work, mm. plush work. It's the name that I want my company to be. Yeah. Then he said, go for it. And even to this day, you know, he'll go, how's my company doing? <laughs> I said, Danny, our company's doing just fine. Right. Because he'll always have a home if he were to come back, you know, or to, wanted to do something musically. He's a brilliant uh, songwriter and producer but that's where the name came from and when it, yeah. when, when it and i started using it to under for all of my film projects independent film projects i did all got tons and tons and tons of music videos for independent artists here so, 
so much that I wanted, I got too tired of it mm. and worked myself out of that into feature films and short films. Um, we did our first short film in 2019, uh, Dream Deferred. Another young lady and myself uh, teamed up to do that. Uh, and it turned, it was a wonderful film. And so I'm getting, uh, I'm waiting to do more, uh, more, more uh, short stories and to, okay. especially feature films. Um, but Plush Work, Plush Work, I didn't even think about an app. It was never meant to be anything, mm -hmm. a production company. But as time evolved and apps became a tad bit popular, I thought, uh, I'm trying to get my stuff on platforms and I keep bumping into walls. Okay. Issues. Right. Uh, most of them were issues where you signed up and once you got there, there were... Um, just bad dealings or okay. you get there and you find out, oh, you've got simple things that turn me off. We want you, everyone, we want everyone to sign up for the subscription. I don't feel that I should come on your platform and give you a subscription, right. or something that you want customers to pay for. If I'm going to pay to be on it, I'll just pay you a fee. Mm -hmm. Something, a subscription. I think that's just, I don't know. Maybe it was just me or whatever, but so when I got to thinking about having my own app, it was during a time when I had signed up for something and the background wasn't working with it. Okay. It was nice for a while, but then there was some static there and I thought, I don't want static anymore. And in order right. to have some true success with what I'm doing, I'm going to have to have ownership. I have to own it. Right. Um, so I thought, well, you need to look at getting your own app. You can still be involved with other apps, but you need to get involved. You need to have your own structured app that you want because you are you are a con content creator. Okay. We're we're content creators. Right. And, and I'm one double time because I can film my own stuff, and I can edit my own stuff, and then I can distribute it. So right. it's just about having the right audience to distribute it to. So um, I'm proud to say that the, the app is up and running. We uh, are not live. We're not going public yet. Okay. It's up and running. All of the bricks have been laid. All of the foundation is laid because if anybody know anything about getting app developers and Apple to communicate, it can be... Uh, an act of Congress. Okay. Apple does not play. They mm -hmm. bring you through the ringer. They're going to make sure every T is dot, every, 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 yeah, I mean, every T every is T crossed. Every I is <laughs> dotted. Every S is curved. Then right. the P has the top portion on it. They right. very, uh, very much like that. So you've got to have all of your things in order. In getting that in order, I had had my LLC for plush work, but I had let it go, uh, a, a, you know, about a month or so, months and so ago. So you have to have all of these different things when you're looking for something as simple as an app because they want to know that you are a legitimate business. Right, right. Up on their site. So LLC, I, uh, EIN number. Uh, mm. Dan's, your Dan's, um, your, what is Dan, Dan Dunn's no, no, yes, Dunn, number, yes. um, Dunn's number, um, your business has to be set up so professional that once right. you're following your stuff, they can say, oh, this is a legitimate business. Right. And now we can review it and see what it is. But if they don't have all those ducks in a row, all those bricks lined up, you can forget it. You'll be there all, all day. It took almost four months for mm. the you uh mine and get mine done uh and it could have been some leg on the on the, on the developers right. on, on me i don't know i don't know if it could have gotten done faster or not but it takes a lot so if anybody's looking to get an app done and you're going through apple just make sure you get all of the information up front that you need to get uh, mm -hmm. try to really take your time to read through to understand it because if you fluff through stuff, something and you just kind of think you, you got it, 
you don't got it. You got to right. read everything and make sure everything is perfectly read through. And so when the when the app is up running live and everything, are we do we expect to have a big grand opening? Uh, what do people expect so we can let them know about Plushwork TV? Most definitely. I was just talking with someone tonight. So the fact that it is up and running uh, is good. I don't want to go live yet because okay. um, I I want to, you know how it is when you, you get a house and then right. you furnish it. Yes. So I want to furnish the house first. Okay. Um, so I'm not. We're not giving anybody links or sending anybody anything. Uh, we just we've got a few things that are on there so that the developers could actually get the ball moving because okay. we have some content on it to to fluff it and give it over to Apple so that Apple can look at the design setting and everything. So I was able to do just enough of that to make mm. that. Now I want I need I want to go in with my bib fork and knife and start moving everything around gotcha. the right pieces in the right places, the right colors, um, the right shows up front, you know, that are the, the, the shows that we, we all love um, and the shows that can bring, you know, some attention to to the shows and to the platform. And uh, so there will be a party. There will okay. be I'm thinking the first part of next year. Okay. Somewhere within the first quarter, I'd like to be around Black History Month. Mm -hmm. if not, I'll look at March probably okay. as that day. If I don't do it in March, then I'm open to the to, to the second quarter. And right. some people will probably say, "Well, that's a long time." I'd rather the right shows are on. Mm -hmm. Launched with not a thousand shows. I don't want a thousand shows. I right. want the perfect amount of shows. Be right. Perfectly that people right. identify with. I don't want shows competing with each other. So right. if there Derek shows on, that's Derek's slot, and there's no slot like Derek's because right. I want people to come and watch Derek. And if I'm right. on my show and Derek's shows are not competing, they're not alike because we have a whole different appeal, I think. That's right. Mind. Right, a vibe, um, and then I'm creating other shows that I may be uh, working with. So I'm not sure if the Mike Lee show will be up front for that, or if there's another great show that I'm working yeah. on called um, Press the T with okay. my uh, with my dear dear sweetheart. Uh, Ask Alex. Her name is <laughs> Alexandra. Uh, so she and I have a show called Press the T. We've been okay. getting really good feedback from that show. Uh, mm -hmm. and that might be the show that I, I'll still do my Mike Lee show because right. it's one-on-one -on -one interviews, but that might be the show that I press a little harder uh, because it it's a mess. It's a right. mess. I'll go ahead and let you know, it's as messy as Wendy. It's, <laughs> it's, it's muddy as Wendy, messy as Wendy. And we don't go for, we, what we don't do, we're not going for anyone's throat. Right. We just talk about those situations and the uh, hot topics we give our opinions and it's like you with real talk with real people we're just keeping it 100 we're not right you know if someone fail yeah they fail right they fail right yeah. Yeah. you know and i love i love stuff like that because in fact a lot of people get mad you bring bringing up Wendy wins a lot of people get mad uh, when he brings up these topics but it's topics that is that they have already brought up she's just talking about it it's not like she is 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 yeah. uh, you know putting out their dirty laundry. No, you already did it. Like you said, you fell. Yeah. You know, yeah. you did this, you did that. So yeah. you know, and we're just going to tell you now what we think about the fall. Right. That's I'll it. Give you an example. One of the topics that we had last week was uh, Jesse Smollett, where he was my topic. And, yes. Um, I, you know, I God bless him. Um, I want to support him, but right. Um, I have real feelings about someone with that caliber. There's so many people that want to get out here and work and be seen and to be right. on. And when right. you have the opportunity to do it, 
You don't screw it up by going out saying that some white man put a noose around your neck. And screw your family. You screw up Thank your you. the people that you work with. I have right. so many big issues. I'm irritated by the fact that that was done. And it was done yeah. by a gay black man. And there are trans and gay people every day who are yeah. treated this way. And it makes it a little bit harder for people in that community to fight for rights because they can now go, oh, well, is this a Jesse Smollett situation? Mm -hmm. Is it true or not? Because yeah. that's what's going to happen? And yeah. so when, when, when I see this and then people, everybody's got their opinions and everybody can pray for him and be on his side, I am not on his side. Yeah. I, and, and, and I don't want, not that I want him to go to jail and to be whatever. Right. I'm saying that no, what he did was wrong. He needs it was wrong. He and the thing is, Mike, is that if the roles would have been reversed, and this was a white man that said that a black man did this to him, we would be protesting, we'd be marching. Uh, you have um 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 uh Reverend Al Sharpton on the TV every single day. So you know, you can't sit there and mm -hmm. think. You know, why is nobody protecting me? Why is, oh, put, put the two on the other foot. Yeah. It would be totally different. It would be totally different. You're right. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I, so. You know, for me, it was just, a, it's just hard to swallow when your family, it, you, you've got, you've got other family members who are actors. The sister's an actress. Right, right. These, these families out working, you make it hard for them. You right. make it harder for the cast of of um, uh, uh, whatever the show that he was Empire. on. Empire. Empire. I mean, you made it uncomfortable. Right. Then you started to d um, slander people like Don Lemon and right. Daniels, and it's like, guy, what are you doing? Yeah. You guys don't yeah. have anything to do with what you did. Because what? people had to take, they had to step back, and 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 be like, you know what, I, you know, I, that's this. You put yourself in this. We yeah. didn't do it. We yeah. have nothing to do with this. So I, I've got to step to the side and let you walk past me so you can deal with your own mess. Your own mess. So yeah, that was one of the things. So what do you, you know, so on a show like that, we just keep it real. We keep it yeah. real. It, it is definitely messy. We kiki it out. And right. it's a great show. We've been getting some really good, uh, good energy from it. So I'm really proud of it. Well, I'm excited for it. I'm excited for Plushwork TV. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to make sure that you tune in. And once it is launched, we're going to make sure that you know, and it's going to be bells and whistles and and inviting people out. We're so I am excited. For con we're going to be looking for content, reality shows. Um, um, also, I, I do want to say this. There's a company called IOM, um, mm -hmm. Image of a Man Network. Um, uh, Cliff over there, so there's no competition. His brand does one thing uh, because it's about image of a man and, 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 and some really quality and great stuff that he wants to do. Uh, what we're going to be doing is it's going to be probably as ratchet as as you see it. Um, <laughs> more streamlined to television of what people gravitate towards. Uh, right. I'm gonna work is hard to get people to watch. Uh, so That's it's, right. it's messy. It's just messy. Uh, That's right. I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not a pastor. I'm not trying to heal the land. Uh, I, I, I need to be healed. So you pastors come out there and heal me. But, you know, so right. I want to see what they want to see. Uh, and, 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 and I'm not trying to make um, our community look bad. That's something right. I don't want to do. I don't right. want any culture look bad or any people. But um, if people have a story or something that they want to sell, and if it's good, um, we're going to put it on. Yeah. Well, listen, Mike, my producer just sent me a uh, message telling me that we're about to run out of time. So to wrap it up. So. <laughs> oh, you got a new producer now since I. <laughs> oh, I better get back to work, y'all. I better get off this platform. Hey, you, got, you got to get back to work. I'm going to lose my job if I don't get hey. around with y'all trying to be famous. Right. <laughs> Listen, I just give somebody to first I'll tell everybody where they can find you, Mike. You can find all you can find uh everything on WW all of the shows you can find www.plushworktv.com. I am on social media at at the Mike Lee Show at Plushwork TV. Um you uh, and please watch the 
the real um, Sister to Sister 2.0, mm-hmm. Jenny Foster Brown. There's also Janine Hovell Cox, who has an incredible show called It's All Legal. And she's also doing celebrity interviews. Also, Jamie is on, and we've got some other people coming on. Our show pops up on there, too. Um, so I'm very proud to be. Uh, Jamie's like my, my mom, uh, and I'm so proud to know her and to have met her. She is a special lady uh, and has done a lot for this culture and community. And we owe her a lot of respect. We owe her a lot of flowers. Uh, yes. You know, so big ups to her. But that's yes. why everyone can find, can find me. Give somebody that is listening right now that is striving to, um, you know, a lot of people want to be in the entertainment business. They want to start their own talk show. They want to start their own podcast. And um, they get in a rut or they don't connect with the right people. What advice would you give that person that's listening right now? I've been there. So my advice is everyone is brought here to do something, mm-hmm. not the same thing. They mm-hmm. do what they're supposed to do. God has a light. Everyone ha- travels around with their own little light. Yes. Stay in your light. Mm, stay Don't in your light. Anyone else's spotlight. That's mm-hmm. not light. Stay in your light and never let anyone tell you what you need to do. Don't change the color of your light. Don't Mm -hmm. change the hue of it. It is your light. The universe Mm. gave it to you. We're all brought here with something special to give. And it Mm. might not be an actor or an actress. Maybe you're good at customer service. Maybe you're good at something else, being a doctor or lawyer, or you're good at driving. Find what you're good at. Mm-hmm. Stay in that light. Make that work. Mm-hmm. You can break off into other things in your life. Mm-hmm. You never, I've, I've gone through so many stages in my life, and each p- part of that life I can dissect. I don't do some of that stuff anymore because I've grown. I keep growing. I right. Keep, the skin keeps coming off. Mm-hmm. Keep growing. So I tell people: be consistent about your passion. Mm-hmm. You have to consistently do what you do. Consistently be in the. If you entertain, and you sing, dance, act, do all that stuff, do it and do it all the time. Don't just do it two or three months out of the month, and then you want to right. take and get back to it. If you are a singer or a dancer, do it. You cannot do it. Sing yeah. you're a singer if you're not out singing. That's right. You're not a singer. That's right. You, you want to. Gotta, you gotta. You you're gotta work your voice. Yes. But if you are a dancer or a singer, go do it. Go do it. I like that. You're gonna do it. But never, never let anybody change your light. Stay. In your I life. love that. I love that. Stay in your light. Mm-hmm. Stay in your light it's because like, that light was is only shining for you. That bulb has got your name on it. That light. Yes. And I just believe that because I've had so many other people to tell me, go down that road or go down that road. Mm-mm. If that yeah. light, if your light ain't shining that way and right. you feel passionate about it and that road ain't right, stay yeah. in, your own, in your own lane, in your own light. Yeah, I like that. And I would add to it when he says stay in your light, know your assignment. And if you know your assignment, your light is always going to shine on you. That's the beauty of it right there. Because when yes. you know that assignment, you and that was the thing, and that was me, Derek. When people tried to change me, I knew I could feel what I was supposed to do. So mm-hmm. I would listen to you out of respect, but I'm going to do what I'm going to do because I know who I am and what I'm, I'm supposed to be doing. Wow. It's a burning. It's a burning. Mm-hmm. My, wow. radio, my job with radio got me prepared to do the work that I do with you today. Yes, yes. You told me that I wouldn't make it in radio. No, it's too many podcasts out here. You're not going to do it. I did it for four, almost five years up to the pandemic, and we were a number one radio show here in D.C. Hey, by knowing your assignment. You know your assignment and stayed in the light. Listen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we could go on and on and on. Are we not doing part two? Yes, we're going to have to do a part two. (laughs) We got to come back. Listen, before we go, I want to wish, because I know this, uh, we are coming up on the Christmas season, so I want to wish everybody have a Merry Christmas and have a safe holiday. I know that, you know, the COVID thing is spiking and things like that and everything, but you know what? Love one one another. Stay safe. 
and do what's most comfortable and right for your family, because that's what it's important to do. We've missed out on so much in the last two years and everything. Now it's about, um, you know, getting back together as family and, and enjoying life. So be safe, have a merry and safe Christmas. Happy New Year. But we will see you back right here again. Mr. Mike Lee, thank you so much. It's been my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me, Derek. I am so honored. So um, again, we're going to have to do a part two and continue with this conversation. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to Talking with 3D. I am your host, Derek Darrell Dixon, right here on Plush Work TV. We'll see you next week right here. I'm going back to work. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Derek. Bye.